Hi, my name is Hamster, and in this video I want to talk a bit about the new uh, trigger state updater feature in weak hours. So someone asked about an interrupt announcer, which is totally possible with the also new cloning of combat lock events. But if you want to pass uh, custom information uh, into the text box for each of those cloned events separately, um, you might need something different. Um, I'm going to show you real quick the basic idea of this and um, how to set it up. So what you need is uh, obviously a dynamic group because our uh, yeah, our aura is going to clone itself uh, and also an aura. I just picked a regular icon one. Um, and the important thing is in a trigger, you want to select custom and trigger state updater. Um, as an argument, it takes the same as a regular um, event trigger would, uh, just in this case, combat lock event unfiltered or every frame. Um, and inside the trigger is where all the magic happens. So the difference uh, in uh, towards the other triggers is that your first argument will always be um, infos named at all states and I'll stick to that. It's basically a table of all your states. Basically every copy the aura makes of itself is stored in here. Um, following arguments are just the same, um, are just the ones passed down by the triggering event. So in this case combat lock event unfiltered. Um, you'll get event, um, combat lock event unfiltered, a weird time step that no one uses, the subtype that we're going to use to filter, and afterwards the arguments as they are listed on the combat lock event unfiltered key page. That's why I'm using those three instead dot 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 right away, um, just so the indices match the wiki page. Um, one check in the beginning, um, against, I guess, older versions. Um, if they are not using this feature, we might run into problems. So if the um, all states uh, argument is not a table, we'll just return and um, this shouldn't do anything. Uh, later on, we'll need the source name and test name for this example. So I'm selecting those out of the variable arguments. And um, what we're interested in is obviously interrupts. So for subtype um, equals spell interrupt, um, we're going to pick more information um, regarding the spells. The first three arguments, spell ID, name, and school, are uh, which which spell got interrupted. Um, oh no, no, I think it's uh, the one that interrupted, and uh, the other three. Again, ID name school are the spell that gets interrupted. Yeah, second one is which gets interrupted. Um, the basic idea, as I said, is that every copy of your aura will be one entry in the all states table. So what we're going to do here is create a local variable, a table, and assign it to a new entry in the all states table. Um, this just counts all entries in all states and adds one on top, so we get the highest possible or the least possible new entry and assign state into that. Then we put into state the information that is needed. Um, State.show obviously manipulates it to show the actual aura, so this is needed. State that changed a lot weak hours that there's actually a change in the weak hour. State dot name is what you'll see with a percent n in the custom text. So in this case, I just put source name in there, um, basically the name of the one who interrupts it. Um, progress type, you've got two options there: timed or static. In this case, um, I'll just make a five-second countdown. Um, for each of the interrupts, you have a bit of time to look at it. Um, that's why I chose timed. Um, timed requires that you um, 
variables expiration time and duration to be filled. Um, I use an uh, external or not external, but preset variable so the user can change it or and flood door. Um, five seconds in this case, um, maybe someone wants to show it just for two seconds, maybe someone wants to see it for, I don't know, ten seconds. Um, could also put dynamic information in here like the spell cooldown of the spell that interrupted, so it, you basically also have a, an announcer when it's ready again. Um, options are, are pretty endless here. Um, so the duration is obviously those five seconds and the expiration time is five seconds plus the current time. Um, pretty basic information. Um, auto hide is set to true so the display will hide once it uh, it's, uh, it expires and resort is set to true. Um, this option basically allows the dynamic group to sort its children. Um, just setting it here won't sort them, you have to set it in a group too. So if you go to dynamic group, group and show something in the sort drop down you can sort the children by duration. Um, so I just set this to two. Um, the icon I'm going to set to the spell that gets interrupted. So in this case the extra spell ID, grab the um, spell info from that. The third argument of that will be the icon. So that the icon will not be a question mark but rather our actual spell. And the spell ID gets set to the extra spell ID as well um, for the tooltip info. And to demonstrate the custom information that you can put in here, um, I am going to put together something I used for an old interrupt announcer, I'm just calling it full string in here. Um, basically like a complete sentence, um, the hamster interrupted target and each spell with a bit of spell coloring. So to do that I'm just grabbing um, colors together some color strings that's not really the focus in here um, the thing is this full, uh, full string is not part of the default state so you can just put it in here whatever you want in this case I'm just putting together the string as you can see um, and it'll get saved and you can access it um, and then you just return true so it's gets saved um, this is all that you need. Um, if we go into the display tab, we can either access those uh, parts of state with percent name, so in this case percent full string, or we could also write some custom text and in there you can access rnf.state.full string. Both works the same. And to show it in action, I'm just going to go down here and look for one of those custom ops which are not all that, there's one. I'm going to go to him, interrupt him, and you'll see the text in here, plus my other old interrupt announcer above it. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening, bye bye.